Ah, uh, Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, and Marshall Montana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ballet, ballet. Now, look, one of the ambassadors of soca music and Caribbean music to the world, Marshall Montano, and I uh, have done a lot of work together. It's been my pleasure. Um, but you recently, and I don't know, is, is it common knowledge to the soca world and to your fans that you had a knee surgery? Yes, very much so. Uh, just in December, getting ready to go into carnival, I decided to to go in there and clip the meniscus, you know, and and and, and I, it so happened that I thought I had three weeks to recover before carnival, but I came out and had to do carnival not really healed, bone on bone kind of. Yeah, you know you know what that bone yeah, on nah, bone you know, my like. knees are shot. So. <laughs> you, had a, you had a torn MCL? No, just the meniscus. Meniscus was, cartilage, you know, the it, cartilage. Lifting up big girls, doing jumping off stage. Oh, it was some, an injury from the big yeah, girls. Yeah, and, and it just, uh. just kind of collapsed after one time. Well, you know? and Marshall, if you've never seen him perform live, you know, he's very <laughs> much an athlete with it. You know, there's yeah. a lot of jumping. It's a, it's a contact sport, if you will, yeah, yeah. when he's on stage. You know, he's, he, you know, he's, uh, Besides he's, the whining. Yeah. The jumping, the running. You yeah. know, it's a lot of activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you've right. been, and you, sir, have been rocking these stages since you were a teenager. Nine years old. Yeah. Nine years old. Kid. More, more than 33 years. Um, so it slowed you down, the the knee surgery has for this season yeah. of carnival and everything, yeah? Well, I, I did less shows during the carnival time, but I tried to be as, you know, effective. I had the biggest Marshall Monday concert. Man. You know, a lot of artists from all over Pitbull came in, Run Tom from Africa. I had, you know, Tim Meyer on stage. And that was like 35,000 people in the stadium. But I also decided after Carnival to kind of go to L.A., see some of those UCLA doctors, NBA doctors to try to really deal with it. So I took the year off, but I did a few critical shows this year, like, you know, come out to do uh, Coachella with Diplo mm, yeah. on the main stage, come out to do uh, King's Theater with Lauren Hill. And I had to actually do like um, some stem cell injections just to be able to come out and do those performances. Yeah, like, what what, what are what are you? This is <laughs> these are the things they do for like an athlete who like needs that's to what perform. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's that guy. The White House. I did the White House this yeah. year too. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I missed yeah. that. Yeah. Did you, how, how was that? That was crazy. I mean, it was about, you know, the influence of the Caribbean on American culture. And it was something organized by President Obama and his staff. You know, trying to build relations between the Caribbean and America and the influence I just haven't known. You know, the, you know, we influence them by the music, yeah, just yeah. the music alone, but more in trade and very, you know, different areas. Now, our our co-host, co-worker, uh, our super producer, um, Shawnee mm. Culture, is <laughs> Trini. Mm. Is Trini, and I often refer to Shawnee as Jafakin. <laughs> Do you often feel that you have other Trinis who claim to be proud Trinis, but when they yeah. kind of get hyped up with the voice they end up putting on, the style they put on, <laughs> sounds more Jamaican than Trini. Well, I mean, How do you feel about sellouts like Johnny Culture? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> it, he's a victim of circumstance, you know. It, that, that, that's a, that's that might be a joke, but that's something really, really it serious, very, you yeah. know. It, you know. People, oh, it is. It is a real thing. Yeah. Anytime people, I am joking, Johnny. Anytime people, people hear us, they say, "Where you from, Jamaica?" You know, I even went to the Soul Train Awards and I had to correct Kim Cole. She said, "Oh, that's a very nice Jamaican accent." I said, "No, I'm Trini." You know, it was funny because they and that's always, just ignorance and lack of knowledge. Well, you know, they, they that's all they know. You know, one job, man. You remember back in the day, yeah. Living Color. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yep. and, and and it's about when we had songs on the on the charts like uh, "Turn Me On," Kevin Little and Rupee. Um, you know, songs, tempted to touch, tempted to touch. They all said, you know, this is new dancehall. This is new reggae. You know, it was never really here as soca music. And for me, you know, I look at it in a way that we have to keep pushing the envelope, keep pushing soca music till it gets to that point where it's recognized for and what it soca is. And soca means? Soca is the soul of Calypso. You know, Calypso music was huge back in the day. Uh, people like the Mighty Spiral, Lord Kitchener, most importantly, Harry Belafonte got the first um, gold record or platinum record in the world off of an album called Calypso. And, you know, they thought that Calypso lost its soul and then it was reborn. And, you know, they put East Indian music into there with the African music and they call it the soul of Calypso, soca music. But it really became sped up Calypso, sort of sped up dancehall, sort of jump up carnival music. And, you know, as carnival is getting more and more popular across the world, soca is too. The beat is coming into play. Well, and it's a very important time. Yeah. Um, cause the reason you're in town right now in New York City is because the first one Africa festival is taking place at the yep. Barclays Center. Yep. And you know, the reason I say it's such an important time is because here in America, uh, many of us don't get to experience the mix of African cultures. Yep. 
all in one place, whether it's Africans in the Caribbean, Africans here in America, or Africans from Africa, all on one concert together to share culture and music. I have yes, to say sir. that's a very rare moment. Um, what does this mean for you? Well, for me, you know, my presence, just being there, just being invited is important. I've been really trying to work with African artists over the last four years, people like Tamaya, people like Two-Face, people like Wizkid, people like Runtown, and I've been doing collaborations only because the African and the soca music is converging on each other. Yeah. And I say it is happening that way, but it's also happening with soca and dance halls, groups like RDX. And if you listen to a lot of the popcorn songs, yeah. you know, a lot of the vibes, cartel songs, and even Beanie Man in recent times have soca music. And this is about unity. This is about us, you know, crossing boundaries because before dance hall was over there and soca was over there and they wouldn't relate to and each other. And hip hop was over there and, and R&B was, was over there. there. Yeah, Africa everybody was over there. Everybody in their, everybody in their own corner. Yeah. Now... We, 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 we more, you know, going towards unity. These things are one beat. The, the number one song on the Billboard charts by Drake, One Dance, is a mixture of Afrobeat, soca, and dancehall, and hip-hop. Yeah. And, and it's what I call naked music. You know, it's music that you could play in one room and 50 different people could really, you know, be attracted and, and understand and relate to it. It's a great it. time. I'm so it's happy about this. It's a good time. It's I'm a so unity happy. time. Um, and we've talked about it. We're doing a party together, uh, Marshall, uh, Beanie Man, OVO, mm -hmm. Cast One, myself, Laura Styles mm -hmm. uh, at Caravana coming up. Um, T Rex, yeah, T Rex is going to be hosting, and you speak about Toronto being a special place yeah. that a lot of people don't necessarily understand, and about the Caribbean being a special place as well, where you have East Indian, African, mm -hmm. um, Jamaicans. Jamaicans um, all, all people, Jamaican, Spanish, everything, yeah. living side by side and experiencing yeah. culture and loving each other's culture in one place is kind of, you know, a, a blueprint for where our world is coming. You know, it's, it's like important cities like Brooklyn, where the diaspora moved to. A lot of people moved from the Caribbean to these places and became the, the foothold. You know, we did the, the, the Labor Day parade. It's the same thing with Toronto. But the difference is... You know, in the Caribbean, we've been forced to live side by side, really close together. Indians, Africans, Chinese, Caucasians, Syrians, and we kind of eat each other's food. You know, I have a food called pilau, which is chicken, rice, and peas. Aras con pollo, chicken, rice, and peas. Mm -hmm. Jamaican jerk, chicken, rice, and peas. If you put it all together, it's different meals, but when you really put it in, in the middle, it's rice, peas, and chicken. Same and we thing. all do... A beef so patties and empanadas. It's a, it's, a, same yeah. it's a similarity, and we yeah. now get to experience each other for the similarities. You know, in New York, when you come, you there's Chinatown, there's Little Italy, there's Koreatown. But in these places like Toronto, it's so small and so compact and so, you know, close together that they all share each other's traditions and they start to like it more. Sometimes I like Indian food more than I like African food. You know, sometimes I like Chinese and, you know, and that's how it goes. And I think that is the importance of our music today. Soca music is about that. Carnival is about that. OVO we're doing Saturday on Caribana Day. That. People going to come off the parade, come to that show because they want soca music. This music that has a little bit of reggae in it, a little bit of hip hop, a little bit of dancehall, and it's going to make them all come together. But really, the fact about the music is, it's happy music. It's not rebel music. It's not revolution. It's not sad. It's not heavy metal. It's really about meet somebody, hug somebody, love somebody. We are forced to love today. You know what I mean? We, we, we know what's been happening in the world right now. We have police officers crying. We have African-American victims crying. You know, we Mothers, have Mothers, fathers, everybody, kids, everybody's upset. Everybody going through it. And right now, the, the, the whole message is how do we love? We need instruments of bringing people together. And I think that's what the Caribbean and the Caribbean music is about. You know, it's Irie, it's paradise, it's, 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 a, it's a little ease up, it's not war. You know, it's, it's really about love. So I think it's an important time for me to keep making music and keep doing collaborations with different artists. I've been working with hip-hop artists, dancehall artists, pop artists, and bring this music to the forefront. And I'm really happy that people like Drake doing it, Rihanna doing it. You know, you Justin know, Bieber's record, sorry. Justin Bieber singing Soka, that is our Soka song, you know? The, the beat, when you listen to the beat, but it's more than just him trying to sing a Soka song. It's him trying to do a record that creates that energy, that vibe, that energy of love, that energy of forget your problems, come and just dance and wind up on somebody and, you know, jump up and, and be good. Are you, And I hear you saying you're happy about it, but you also hear people who aren't so happy that these individuals are... Drake, Bieber are bringing these records to the forefront for the world. We've had people on the show that aren't happy and don't feel like they're giving the proper credit. 
But I always take that to be, you know, I always use the example of Republicans and Democrats. You know, some people want to stay pure. Some people want to change and go forward. There's a picture going around on the internet of a girl that's the example of what people are going to look like in the next 50 years if you Google it. And she looks nothing like white, black, Indian, Chinese. You don't know what she is. But that's just where we're going to move to. We're going to move away from being separate and away from being what was pure. You know, some people are trying to keep it conservative, they call it, or traditional, or stick to what was. But, you know, change is the only thing that's inevitable, and we're moving towards this change, you know. So it's what's going to happen. The people who really stand up here and saying, why are you bringing... When I tried to do songs with Beanie Man and Red Rat back in the day, they, they would complain and say, why are you bringing reggae into a carnival? You know, but the reason why I did it, when I started singing soca music, you know, young people, I, I didn't see young people around me. They were only older people and they were really clapping and they loved me. And I said, Mom, let me see where these young people are. And I went to the club and they were all lip syncing Belle Biv DeVoe, Poison and New Edition. And, and the girls were screaming for them. And I came on and I started singing Calypso and they booed me. Mm. And then I was like, wait a minute. So they don't like their own music. So I was like, I will have to sing R&B or sing reggae. But something clicked at 11 years old and said, no, you can fix this. And I started mixing the music with hip hop, do a song with Pitbull, do a song with Wyclef, do a song with Dougie Fresh, do a song with Beanie Man, do a song with Shaggy, and kind of just give them something mixed a little bit mm. so they would love it and then love their own. And eventually it came to be that they accept what soca music was, you know? So it's, it's just a process and it's time after time, everything that's in Yo, the dark. I love what you're talking right about now. right now. It's so so great. I'm just sitting back. So huh? positive. Oh, uh, yeah, it's I positive vibes. But it's also like, you know, because we're around music, you're a DJ, right? We hear how all the music goes together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you know why hip hop goes with dance hall and you know why R&B goes with hip hop and you know why R&B goes with soca and you know yeah. why soca fits with rap. Like, you hear it work together, but for some reason we're conditioned to separate. Yeah, to divide and rule. That's that's what we've been taught. And we've been spending so much time existing under a Darwin concept which the strongest survive. You know, we always think that competition is what works. You know, they teach us that you have to succeed or you have to beat the other radio station or you have to beat the other artists. But really and truly, we hardly spend time focusing on how much cooperation works more than competition. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you look at you look at the deer when they're ready to go and drink in the water hole and they know that the lion is down the corner, 53 percent of them will point their nose towards the lake and go to that lake so that they're all moving together. Then they protect themselves. We study, we have to study more how cooperation works much better than competition. I used to be in the Soka Monarch competition for years and I decided no more competition, it's cooperation. I'm gonna start doing collaborations with young artists, with African artists, with Indian artists, just to keep spreading the music and keep showing them new things. When you listen to a record like Justin Bieber and you hear him singing on a Soka beat, a wider audience is attracted. And even the American pop audience will find something about it is different or exotic. You know, and then they might meet somebody who say, hey, that's my music. It, it causes a sort of cooperation and a sort of togetherness that we need to spend more time doing now. You know well, it'll make it more likely that the next time they hear a Marshall Montana record, whoever it is, they, they're they now it. familiar. Yeah. And they go, oh, I like this sound. This right. is like yeah, a Bieber I know record. It. I know and, it. And so you can get upset. And I, I understand, by the way, I relate to all sides of this, but one could be upset going, oh, well, why do you think it sounds like Justin Bieber? No, it doesn't. Well, whatever the reason is that gets them to open their ears to the artist, yeah. you want to take, it, and uh, and take advantage. And it, and it gives you a situation where people interact and share and share happy experience together. This is what we need. You know, we need to stop defending our flags. They give us flags to defend your colors and you defend your colors and you defend your colors. You Separate know. us. Make Separate us go to war. Us, and yeah. Meanwhile, the rich kick back and watch everybody go at each other. That's it. And and right now, more than anything, what you just said is the surest thing ever. Not not, not wanting to be a side of one color. It's, it's Really, it sounds cliched, but it's, that's not what it is. Yeah, and, and and you know what? You see the growth of the world. You know, you, you know, in, in, in countries I've been traveling, and the more and more I travel to India and Africa, they speak in English. In more and more countries now, mm -hmm. normal you could you could really be a tourist and get along with people easier because most people speak in English. You know, it's like me coming into New York City this morning and going into the Paramount Hotel and going downstairs for breakfast, and everybody's saying hi, Marshall. Hey, 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 Mr. Marshall. You know, the guy serving the breakfast is Trini. You know, the, the the lady at the front desk is Trini. That never used to happen back in '84 and '85 and '86 and, and '90s. Now they're coming up out of Brooklyn and they're in the city. 
you know, they're getting the jobs, they're in, they're in Bank of America. So people yeah. recognizing me more and they're being more woven into the fabric of mainstream cities. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Drake, you know, have a lot of Caribbean friends playing him these records and he decided to be influenced by it. And with his power, he helping all music touch the corners of the globe. It's, 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 I was having a conversation with a number of artists in town for the One Africa Festival at Barclay, and I have the same conversation. I, I do it on purpose, actually, where I bring up and I say to them, you know, here in America, they tell black kids that Africans don't don't like you. Yeah. And uh, all the African people I talk to you say, well, they tell us that you guys don't, you guys don't like us. And I'm like, well, they tell us that you don't like us. And they're like, and I'm like, we need to stop that. Yeah. Like we need to look from a different angle that we and we, well no we need to understand that we're being told that so that we don't communicate with each other yeah. so that we stay at odds yeah right like that's a part of social engineering in some way so yeah. that there's a conflict and so people can actually capitalize on that conflict and that's something that I think you know with this festival that's happening, with the uh, music that's being made by all the mainstream artists, yep. music is that is that thing that brings everyone together. We know that's the most powerful weapon out there is music, yes, and, and music can continue to bring people together. And I'm just, it's awesome to hear you, hear you talk like this. It's about love, yo. We have to find new ways to love each other. We think love is between a man and a woman, or a husband and a wife, or a dad and a kid. But what about brotherly love? You know, what is love really? Love is really you know, helping people and, and, and being there for people and showing them that you really could relate to them, you know. And sometimes right now, a lot of these problems we have with police officers is the, the misunderstanding of fear. You know, they, 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 they fear what they don't know. So sometimes they act based upon fear. I like to go in a situation and say, what would love do now? You know, love would forgive. You know, lo love would really sometimes stoop to conquer, you know, and, and, and really take a hit sometimes. Take a slap on the other cheek. Love will do something different than fear. And we really have to, to, to my music, Soka Music, the movie I'm premiering next week in PlayStation Theater is called Basudi, and it's about being stupid in love. Basudi is the word in Trinidad that's just like sprung. You know, you sprung. Mm -hmm. But the movie is about me, a, a, a Rasta black artist, you know, falling in love with this Indian girl who's about to get married and it's taboo in Trinidad and Tobago. It's taboo for Africans to marry into Indians. And, you know, and... Really? Yeah. It's, Still? Uh, well, well, kind of, you know, it's been getting better over the years. It's just like America is getting better. Right, we get, we're get getting more and more diluted, more and more mixed. You know, we're getting more and more cross. Two things. Well, one, I know you're all about not separating people but and not competing, but Ebro, I believe that Marshall should replace Sonny as the <laughs> trendy on the show. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. See, you see the white man <laughs> trying to get in. through. Sorry, yeah, black guys to, go at each other. Out, like, but he, but I'm also reaching out. Thank you. That's right. He's, he's reaching out. See, and also at number two. <laughs> Positive so change. And on, hold on. on a, and, <laughs> and on a serious note, um, it's just it's just interesting to hear you um, hear you say that, both the story about uh, your film yeah. and... Uh, the way you see the world evolving, because one of the things that I struggle with when we talk about these issues is that, you know, as, as a white guy, I don't, I, I'm here to support and, and, and promote the ideas that I believe are true, but while yeah. understanding that my experience is different. Different. Yeah. Ebro, his approach can be at times, as much as you're very much about everything getting together, you also do tend, and so does Shawnee, it can err on the side of somewhat militant. Yeah, yeah. for facts. Yeah. And, and then yeah. sometimes... Aggressive. Yeah. And aggressive. aggressive. And I go waver between being like, yes, totally feel you. And mm -hmm. then I hear when you talk also, and I'm like, but is that necessarily the best way to go either? Or is right. there somewhere... Or is that a reaction to being sort of pushed in the box that they want you to go to? And what we really should do is it's, go someplace it's, else. It's like how some people feel Black Lives Matter are aggressive. And some people are passionate and some people try to understand why the Africans are passionate. And then some people, but to me, it's all about what would love do? You know, forget race, forget what we've been through as a race. We've all been through something and sometimes some of us more than others. Yes, of course. But we live in the present moment and the present moment is about love. You know, you have to choose love because that will make you act a certain way. Some brothers get militant about it because they're passionate about it. Of course. It. Yeah, but it's, and it's understandable. for love. That's well, what I, I think, see it. When I think I where it comes from is your the passion and the and the uh, the aggressiveness comes from a place of 
frustration right. because why are we still having this conversation? Part one. I think part two is why can't individuals that aren't dealing with the oppression and the feelings that others are acknowledge and 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 accept those individuals' pain? But why is when someone tells you that you're hurting me? Why is it so, so hard, hard to for, for the other person because to go? Because they don't know the feeling. Because right. they they have yeah. no. No, I understand. They have no, but that's uh, where the aggression comes from. But, where but, it's but, like stop. But, but check this. Somebody's telling you they hurt. They need this, you to Ebro, acknowledge that. Ebro, in that moment, you have to be very innovative. You see, the frustration is pushing you to find a new way. Mm. Find a new way, a way that was never used before, mm -hmm. to trigger into that person's heart. Well, that's why I hired him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is a new way. Find a new way. Well, you know? no, that it worked in a moment, right? Like a, a moment where you can, where you, it's important to have a person who those people do identify with, who is saying, right. "Hey, I'm yeah. telling you, you're not realizing that there are a lot of people how, hurting right now." How effective it was when you blew up the other day. Well, right. That's the, and it, that, it, by it, the way, that was, was e, that was Ebro's mastermind eight years ago. It just happened to CNN. It was a big situation. You know what I'm saying? But but let's go back to certain things like really basic. We're gonna have to really face. They talk about the gunman. You know, the gunman. We keep hearing about this gunman like he's a bad thing. And in that one weekend, we had. Four different gunmen. We had one gunman in Orlando that had one gun and took out a lot of people. We had, you know, a guy selling DVDs who had a gun on him but really didn't take it out and got shot. Then we had a guy who had a gun on him and he was licensed to carry mm -hmm. and he got shot. And then we had these guys pointing guns at him who were, you know, licensed to carry guns and probably even licensed to kill. These gunmen, but yet they talk about the gunman who was running through Dallas, the gun and the man... How does gun and man really relate? Which one is right? The one who is licensed to carry it? The one who was hiding it? The one who was, you know, using it with the law behind? Gun and man does not go together. A gun was created to kill. Man was given the power to create life, not to take it. And until we sit down and really, really, really mm -hmm. analyze that and say, well, how do we get rid of guns? We're going to be crying. Police officers are going to be on TV crying. You know, we wanted to cry for Alton and cry for Philando's family. And the day after, some police officers got killed and their families was crying. Mm -hmm. And you kind of confuse. You don't know whether you want to cry for them or not cry for them or say it should happen. But at the end of the day, we all human beings. We all family, and that is the issue that we will need to go back to. That's what love will need to. And take that's us where back Rosenberg to. always goes. Is it's gun, we got guns. guns. Can we? Guns what do we go? What do we do to 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 make Marshall more of a? You need this, to be out uh, there more. You we need yeah more yeah, of this. Well, like, we, you need to come back once well, look, every that's month. That's why the president yeah. brought him to the White House. That's yes, why sir. he's been on our reggae show, Hot Nine Seven. Yes, sir. That's why he's on the One Africa Festival. That's why people bring him to Africa. That's why he's you that, know that's he's been the ambassador. That's why I'm working really hard right now to make soca music more about love and peace and unity, and not so much about the jumping and the waving and the whining where it's been. I'm really struggling hard right now to to transform my music. This movie I'm doing tells a story about love conquering and I really want to work with African artists to get that culture that spirituality and tr try to bring this music as a celebration music to celebrate life and not only celebrate life but celebrate success failure you know struggle but still celebrate because there are lessons in all these things there are lessons we were just talking about the girl you know broadcasting her boyfriend's death on Facebook instead of like trying to give him mouth to mouth you know, and, you know, we were saying probably that was necessary for the world to see how graphic it is, how hurtful it is at that point in time. But for me, you know, I think we, we, we're going to get to that point where we have to show certain things to get to certain things. It's going to have to be rough before it gets better. It's going to have to be disastrous before we make that change. People are going to have to be frustrated and get militant. You know, you know, out of war comes peace, but there's a time when we have to realize Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Marshall Montano, ladies and gentlemen. That.